Hey everybody, this is Jim, and welcome back to Introduction to Corn Shell. In the first lesson, we went over how you print out information from a corn shell script to the screen. In the second lesson, we went over how you take information and store it into a variable. And once again, a variable is nothing more than a temporary storage area within a script. Now in this lesson, I want to go over how you would prompt a user to, to enter information in from the keyboard and put it into the corn shell script. That's running. Okay, so let's get started. Once again, as always, first line, first column, pound exclamation point slash bin slash ksh. This tells the Unix operating system that every command in this script is going to be either known to the corn shell or known to the Unix operating system. You should always put it there. Next, we have just a comment telling us what the name of the corn shell script is. It's a good idea to put it there. And afterwards, we have a brief description of what the script is intended to do. The script shows how to read input from the user. Moreover, it warns you about how white space is used to input more than one variable. And lastly, it's a good idea to put some contact information in. Uh, as soon as I get my website up and running, I'm going to start putting contact information right there. Okay. So, in order to get the user to input something into your running program, you have to prompt them so they know to put stuff in. Well, you do that with a print statement. Here's an example. Please enter a city name, colon, space. There's one problem with this. Normally, when you prompt somebody to do something, you would like to see the cursor right at the end of the prompt. The problem with the print statement is it automatically assigns a carriage return. So when then we run this, what you'll see is it will say, please print a city name, colon, space, and then it will drop down to the next line. So we're going to get around that. Okay. One thing I do want to show you in the meantime is this right here. If you ever want to print a blank line, just say print. The reason why I put it here is because I wanted to separate this from this stuff right here. So when we run the script, you'll see it will say please print a city name, it will print a blank line, and then it will print this statement here. Now, if you notice, this right here and this right here are, are almost identical except for this dash n. And what the dash n does is it tells the Unix, tells the corn shell script not to append a carriage return. So when you are prompting the user, the, car the cursor will end up sitting right at the end of your print statement. And it looks pretty good when you run it. So what this will do is say, please enter a city name, colon, space, and then the cursor will just sit there and wait and wait and wait. And let's see. See, I have it running right now. And as you can see, it's just sitting there. The, carrot, the prompt did not go, the cursor did not go down to the next line. OK. So now that we know how to prompt a user, how do we actually read information in from the keyboard and store it into a variable? Well, you do that with this right here. It's a read statement, and the syntax is read space variable name. So in this case, whatever the user types in up to a carriage return will get put into city. Okay. So next thing I did, just to prove that the information was in fact stored in the variable city, I went and I just printed it out right here. Print the city, the name of the city is dollar sign city. Once again, if you're assigning information to a variable, you don't need the dollar sign. When you're getting information from the variable, you put a dollar sign in front of it. Okay. Then right then afterwards we just print a blank line. Now there's one problem here. The read statement automatically assumes that when you put a space into a string, 
that would be the end of a variable if you have more than one variable. And what I mean by that is if you say the following right here, please enter the name of two cities. And it's just say the names of two cities. Oh well, let's change it right now. Okay, now right here it's going to read in what the user types in. It's going to sign everything up to the first space into city one and everything after that first space into city two. So if you typed in for the two cities, New Space York Space Trenton, what will actually happen is New will get put into City 1 and York Space Trenton will get put into City 2. And that is because whenever the read statement sees a space coming from the keyboard, it automatically assumes that that is the end of the variable. So, the and we'll go through this example right here because we obviously have the print statement. However, what I wanted to tell you here, really what you want to do is only read in one variable at a time because the space is going to mess things up if somebody enters a space in. It's going, to, it's going to mess things up. So it's just best to read in one variable at a time. So let's run this program and we'll take a look at what happens. Okay. Now, as always, in order to run a program, you need to make it executable. So we do that with the Unix command change mod u for user plus x for execute and then the name of the program. This program is now executable. You only need to do that once. Once you make it executable once, it's executable forever. Okay, so now we have to tell the Unix operating system where this program resides. Well, it's in our present working directory, which is symbolized by the symbol dot. And then we put a slash because that is the directory separator. And we give it the name of the program right there. Okay, so that first print statement as you can see it printed it out and then it went down to the next line and then in the script there was another print statement and that was to print a blank line and then there was the print statement with the dash n and as you can see no carriage return was appended to the end of that print statement so please enter the name of a city New York okay so it assigned everything up until the carriage return that the user put in into the variable city. The name of the city is New York. Please enter the names of two cities. New York Miami. Okay. And as you can see when this got read in, it read everything up to the first space and put in the first variable, new, which was city1, and everything after that just got put into city2. Okay, let's rerun this program, and actually I have it open in another window, so it's easy enough. Okay, please enter the name of two cities. Let's try quotes around it, see if that does anything. Nope. So as you can see, that space really is the defining characteristic of where the read statement breaks apart input and assigns it to variables. So once again, I recommend that you only read in one variable at a time. And if you need to input more than one city, read in, uh, prompt the user to enter the name of a city, and then prompt the user to enter the name of another city. And read into another variable. Well, that's it for now. Take care.